Greetings everyone, the Good Tonight here today with a review I started two years ago and never really finished. So, I initially started with a little, uh, a SEMA AK-47 sort of Spetsnaz model, 20 year anniversary type, because I liked AKs, and it was a good start, so. Then one day, out with, uh, Redbeard, well, demon of a gaming now, we were out shopping and I spotted a little gas blowback that held my attention. The VZ-61, here by, uh, VFC. KSG, Umarex, whatever you want to call them these days. Or whatever is hip in the nose. So this is a little gas blowback. It's pretty simple. And I've been wanting to review it. It was my second favorite, or second gun I used. Which led to this combination. A quick little nice little CQB dual wield. Single shot and full auto. Plus a grenade launcher for crowd control. Pretty cool. Pain to reload. As with most akimbo sort of setups. But yes, this also comes with a 20 round or a 40 round magazine pouch, or magazine. And you can get fit them in most MP5 magazine pouches and everything. Now, there is only one problem currently with this one, and that is the stock, which you would never use for anything more than a counterweight, is loose. There's supposed to be a little pin set up in there, but some roguish Philistine found it in his heart somewhere, it was a mistake. He was trying to get to come off and used retard strength, which seems to be what happens when I let people see my things. So, it could still be we use closed, but generally there would be a small pin there that you would push to release it. Now, it's pretty simple. When it's set to safe, which is this lever down here, with a semi being backwards and full auto being forwards, designated by the 20, the 0, and the 1, it, well for one, this little pin re retracts because in the old school leather holsters this was to prevent it from firing in a holster. And it also means you can't cock the weapon. So you can't chamber any rounds while it's set like this. Now, starting off, this is the key exploit. This the, if you fire this in full auto, it will be fun but it'll only be fun for about two seconds. And then you're out of ammo, so this is a very, very good way to learn about the importance of ammo conservation, because A, these mags are already heavy steel, which, unlike real steel, when you fire all the rounds out, they're still heavy, so. We're gonna be working with this, so basically, all you'd wanna do is the mag has this little catch nub here, and a little fill valve and everything. You know, magazines work. You would insert it here, and then all you need to do is chamber the first round, which is done with these pulling pegs. And there, it's chambered. It's ready. Now the thing a few people want to do is they'll want to hold it here. And as you can imagine, this is going to be kicking back left and right. So, terrible idea. So you can hold it from the magazine, which in a more realistic situation would cause a jam. But airsoft fly is not a big problem. Or you could just two-hand it like a normal handgun. Now, for... Basically, emphasizing the rate of fire. This isn't a gun. I mean, it's it's accurate. There's a pretty impressive hop-up. It does use this interesting hop-up tool, which I will be explaining in a second. But yeah, basically, we've got it loaded. We've got a 20 round mag here. And today, visiting in from France is Professor, which is what the pro means, Targay. And Targay is a French name. It's apparently very, very popular. He has a weird round face and he is volunteered his life for the purposes of showing off how this gun works because it's being fired in a very small room. So, as with all things, safety first, people. Take this helmet, yeah. Move that there. A little Protec bump helmet. Yeah, we don't need the chin strap. And we will put on our goggles of safety. Ah, there we go. Safety. And with this, and the assistance of Professor Tage in the corner, we will basically just do a quick full auto burst, because why not? Ready, Professor Tage? The surrender. Awesome. So, we are out of ammo, and the chamber is locked back for us. And it was nothing short of awesome. It's pretty much what you want from an airsoft gun. It's a good deal of kick, a massive muzzle flash, well, muzzle flash, I mean, gas, but you get the uh, huge flash, and just tons of noise, chaos, and destruction. So, 
pretty awesome. With this now, when you insert your next magazine to basically close it, it doesn't have a release button, so you just pull this back one more time, even with a single finger, and I'll free it up, and forward it goes. So, that was fun. And as you can see, the magazine. Now, here is the main reason I stopped using it. It's not because it's not a fun gun, it's not because it's a blast, it's not because the mags are heavy. It is because, this, well this would normally lock back here, but this one needs a bit more cleaning. But basically, this is it. This is all you have to feed BBs in. And it does not like loading. And not just that, but then you have to ensure in here, which you can't load in with like the MP Tokyo Motor MP7s or anything, that all of this is properly aligned so you don't have feeding issues, which would ruin that short, what, 0.8 seconds of fun we just had putting 20 rounds into Professor Targay. Speaking of Professor Targay, the kick kind of dragged the gun around, mind you, I'm blind, so he's still together in the center. Actually, we kind of bursted him down here and then up in the corner here, so pretty awesome. So yeah, that's basically the most important part of shooting as far as semi-auto goes. Go ahead and take the long 40 round mag, as, yeah, as I was mentioning, lined up properly. Also, this button does catch on this magazine. So another problem I had is if you don't release this button to keep the magazine feeding, you'll fire one BB and then just a ton of gas ineffectually. So we're going to have fun with this. Now, as you can see, this makes the gun exceptionally longer with an absurd banana mag sort of setup. But in semi-auto, this will last quite a bit, especially if you just double tap everything that comes your way. So once more into the breach with the kind assistance of Professor Tage. Indeed, bonjour Professor Tage. We will now slowly and methodically put rounds into Professor Tage until we've gone through all 40. Are you ready? I should probably I should probably chamber around first. Are you ready, Professor Target? Oh, too late. There we go. 40 rounds later with a bit fast fire and the magazine's already cold, which is good. A hot summer day, this is the point where you would take a break from the fighting, duck behind cover, and rest your mag actually just take the magazine up, place it against the back of your neck. Ah, oh, and it feels good. So, good stuff right there. Creamy. So, pretty awesome. And with that, we'll move on to the next part. Disassembly. So we're already pretty much sure looking on glasses. I mean, you, just because you guys can see doesn't mean I can. So, basically, the entire takedown process for the VFC-61 is actually quite simple, which is what it was designed to do. So, pop you free. We would push the pin to free this, Chris, but it doesn't work anymore, so we'll just slide this out freely. I mean, it's not too bad. It's a, like $5 worth of parts plus shipping, and I could put a zip tie or some string through there and hold it together. Now the gun's still fully operational like this. You see there's where the pin goes in and all the internal mechanisms are in their proper place. All you gotta do is preferably, actually I think you pull it in, yeah, there you go. Pull the top receiver towards you so the bottom receiver stays in place and you can free up the pin. This can come all the ways out if you want fully disassemble or we can field strip. You slide this forward a bit, pop it up, just like the real thing. Got our trigger mechanism and everything here. We can go ahead and set that down if we want. So there's all the trigger mechanisms. Lighting's not too good, but you can see the uh, mover around with the selector switch. Good stuff. Right up here, you can see that uh, non-fire safety tab pop up, like so. Yeah, so. This is just a good field strip if you don't want to take it all the ways down. So all you really have to do is reach up here, and here is your bolt. Now, to free the bolt, your little thumb tabs here are also fully removable, like so. Pop that out, actually let me take this pin all the way out like so. And they gun separate, upper receiver from lower receiver. 
Moving on, you remove the second one here out of the side. As you can see, it has a little nubbly grip, and that nubbly grip goes into the nubbly side. And then all you have to do is pull this out, and there is your bolt. Pretty simple, bolt on two springs. There's the gun. Actually, while we're at it, let me show you how the hop-up tool works. This is kind of a big deal. Now, to adjust the hop-up, right inside here, in the chamber, you have a little groobly, groobly being the official term, with your second counter groobly. You basically put this in here, and you would twist it left for more hop-up, and right for less hop-up. Now, not the easiest hop-up setting, but I could think of far, far worse. I mean, you could just pull the bolt back, and I think you can actually, yeah, you can fit this in from up here and work on it from up there as well. So yeah, setting up the hop-up, tons of fun. And yeah, once you punch the bore here, clean out some of the mechanisms and the bolt, it's ready to put back together. So, taking your upper receiver, you want to first take the bolt and drop her in there, like so. It's nice, oiled, and ready to go. And then, take your pin, you're basically going to want to pull the bolt back until you are aligned with the back end here. A little bit, a little bit further there, bolt. Come on, work with me. There you go. And slide these in now, like so. And then the second one on the other side. Boop. The facial noise it makes. Slide that forward as soon as it's ready, and. We are ready to reconnect it to the lower receiver, place that there, and then just slide the pin back in, the takedown pin. That's the official term. And boom, she's ready. Hey, you can put the top thing back in if you want people to really, really know what your gun is. Otherwise, it's got this funny little nubby part here. And yeah, it is a blast. So. Like I said, I've had this gun for quite some time now, and I've really never got around to uh, playing with it. So yeah. Oh, your magazine releases this button. It just releases it. It's a very, very simple concept and design. And technically, it was supposed to get uh, like 150 meters in range. Not bad. Weird ammo type and everything in the more realistic setting. So let's take a look at little uh, markings here. This little pin, you can actually swap out the handle because the actual gun would kick back and have a zero rate of fire. So they made a kick back, push down little lever thing, and then it would reset. To slow down the rate of fire, make the gun more manageable in full auto, it already fires absurdly fast and it actually used to fire faster in its prototype age. So, yeah, as far as putting a massive heavy mag in here, like so, you can quickly basically have a large full auto handgun with an absurdly long magazine. And it's fun. It's a lot of fun, it's not terribly accurate. It's definitely meant to run up on people or use as self-defense, quick burst type. And yeah, the best part, one-handed, you can use it with a grenade launcher or something crazy. And yeah, just little 5.11 magazine pouches or anything really will hold these. And yeah, so it's cool. The really downside, the only down big downside it really has it's just that the magazine is a pain to load. But being VFC, you could use LP gas. You put straight propane in here as long as you remember to spray lubricant. And yeah, it's pretty fantastic. I did enjoy the time I used it, but yeah, pretty much after every game, I'd have to spend a ton of time reloading and making sure all the BBs were in place. And everyone else was pretty much ready to start a game. So eventually I ended up sticking with like AEGs and shotguns and stuff. Or the simpler to load MP7, which is being hustled off. So. Good stuff, enjoyed it, um, pretty fun. The uh, sights aren't terribly adjustable, some more of the technical stuff. They're not terribly adjustable, it's kind of set where it is. There is no rail system. You could probably buy an aftermarket little uh, rail for a sight or something, if you want to. But yeah, it's definitely designed to have more of a classic old school feel. Not a lot of modifications or suppressors or anything. It's designed to be loud and fun. That's pretty much what it comes down to. It is the DACA of the Orcs Warhammer 40k. And yeah, so that's all I really got for you. I think that covers pretty much everything. And yeah, so stay chill with everyone. Cheers. I'll see you in the next video. My uh, kids have been busy, so 
kind of finding things to do until I can get back out to the field. So cheers, everyone. Stay chill, bros. See you next time.